Welcome to Book Hub for Movies Special in the Same Room Edition. It's can't. It's. But, yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're together, and this. Is, you know, look. Here's the thing. It's going to be exactly the same as when we're not in the uh, same room together. Yeah, as you can tell. Unless uh, the only difference might be is is we may have some double things going on depending. We're, we're looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at your pretty uh, mouth. Guess, which technically we do that normally, but do there's we? a computer between us, which is how I prefer to experience the world. Most yeah, of the and time. I'm actually considering just opening up my laptop in yeah. a different room. We, in fact, yeah, maybe if I went in the other room and we video chatted that way. Oh, we could too, actually. Okay. Yeah, and it left the mic here also. So it was you just, you. You, well, you know what we could do is like a game of telephone. We'll just put like, we'll create like a long tube that you can talk into and just, you know, we'll wait for the sound to travel there. It'll be fine. No. Also, this feels weird because I'm standing like you. <laughs> yeah, you are standing exactly like you me. Do, well, okay. Now I'm standing exactly like you. <laughs> Legs spread more. Yes. We're, did we turn the video on for this? We didn't. So we nobody did. knows. Uh, <laughs> you usually stand. I don't because I feel like it's going to hurt my back. So we're old. I'm old. No, it hurts my back. Okay, but I, just but I, to check. But I sit you. down all day and I don't want to sit for another, depending on how long the show goes. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes we do an hour and we bust out two shows. Oh. Other times oh, it's three to four hours because we can't shut up. And then Ryan has to spend days editing yes. everything down. And something tells me this is going to be. It's going to be short. This is going to be short. We are not going to get into the weeds on this. We're not. You think? No, we're not. I'm not. I'm not doing a whole bunch of backstory here. We're not doing what? it. We're okay, not doing well, it. We have to do some backstory. We'll do backstory everybody, for the movie. Everybody. This is the Shazam show. I can't even say that. That's hard. The Shazam show. Okay. Well, you've had practice for like 23 years. Let me hold on. Let me tell you something about Tweedle Beetles. <laughs> What? Is that a thing? Yeah, Tweedlebee. You've never read Fox and Socks? Oh, no, I thought it was like a Shazam thing. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. just because I do. I like There's to a read talking that. Worm. So I'm to... new to this. <laughs> I don't know. He's an alien, okay. to be fair. All right. Well, oh, is... so it's also probably not a worm, is he? He's like a caterpillar? Go oh, either he's way. He's an alien. He yeah, just he's an looks alien like worm. A he, I, to me, he looks like a caterpillar. Okay. But there's all like they, I think they refer to him as an alien worm in the comics, and okay. I just refuse to acknowledge that. I just I just want to make sure, because Shazam has a very rich and storied history that I don't know about, but you do. I do. I know things. The buildup. In fact, I'm going to get everything I know about Shazam out in this show, uh, which is probably everything I've learned in the past week or so. So, but you. I feel like you at least need to go into some detail about your Shazam, your history with Shazam. Sure. Uh, so I, I when I was a when I was a, a kid, when I was very young, the f uh, I was at I think I was actually at my my uncle who just passed away. I think I was at his house, and the uh, there was a serial of the show. Um, and it was really, it was pretty good. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't like the Batman serial, so that wasn't like like as a breakfast food. I'm not a huge fan. But it had purple. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there was a, a serial that came out in 1932 and it was called The Adventures of Captain Marvel. And it was the first superhero movie, really. It was their superhero serial. Like nothing had come before that. So this is back in 1932 at your uncle's house. Yes. How old are you? Uh, don't worry. <laughs> Counting. I'm, I'm very worried. Yes. At this well, point. <laughs> I look great uh, for, for my age. So I... I watched that and I was I was really taken by the idea of of a character just saying a word and becoming a superhero, you know, like that to me is every kid's dream. You just want to be able to go Shazam and now I'm a superhero. It's a good word, too. And honestly. it's a great word. Yeah. Uh, so I, I saw that and then my dad um, noticed that I enjoyed it and he was like, oh, there was a show in the 70s. You should we should watch that. And uh, and then my dad kind of got some of the comics and and I started picking them up when I started reading comics heavily. So I got I just got super into him and I really liked him because as a kid, like I said, I wanted that. I love the idea of being 12 years old, saying a word. And now I'm an adult superhero that that for all let's I, I'm going to get this one out there. Oh boy. Shazam, stronger than Superman and one of the oh. only people oh. that can actually beat Superman because <laughs> Superman can't deal with magic. It's one of his. But we're not going to get into the weeds. No. <laughs> also, we will probably get into Superman a little bit, actually. Maybe. Uh, it might not be kind words, but <laughs> they will be words. They'll be words. Okay. So this, I mean, this was not in 1932, but you were really young. and you, Really young, yeah. I've never let off this, I think, since then, if I had to guess. No, he's always been kind of there. He, the biggest issue with Shazam has always been 
that DC has never known how to use him. He's a character that that in the there's so there's a lot of history where um, we're we're gonna okay I'm gonna we'll get into this no, tiny no, little bit because I, I don't want to dig into this too far and well, I'm not gonna get into all of the detail on it. But well, when you say DC didn't know how to use him because they originally shut him down, and I didn't know this. I'm not I'm not yeah. speaking like uh, stuff. I'm gonna say you're gonna think oh he knows I don't know I found this all out yesterday because as part of this experience we went to this place this wonderful magical place which speaking of I magic, like that you did quotes under wonderful like it's not no, yeah you went, it's just my hands I I don't know what to do with my hands during this thing. So I, you, normally you can't see them so yeah i'm just gonna leave them in front of my face everybody which is what he's doing it's called the alamo draft house the visual medium and it's heaven on earth uh there's a spider on the wall right behind you <laughs> oh there is benefits of being in the same room is that you didn't die from that spider this time i'll deal with it later anyways alamo draft house spiders oh. are dead and we're back to seeing movies <laughs> yes i'm not even joking the alamo draft house is maybe I can't think of a place that I like more than it right now. I, I'm, it's, and this is going to be another theme throughout this show is I'm kind of surprised we didn't record right when we got back because we're so high on this thing right now. And like I said, this the entire experience was nuts, but the Alamo Draft House has movies, has videos made for it. Number one, they're not showing Coke ads while you wait for the movie to start. No, not at all. They're showing this these gorgeous japanese cereals if i had to guess yeah i don't know what it was it was just, just they, they were showing like a version of ultraman or something Something, but they're amazing looking they they have in fact ultraman's a great uh example like that design that's just ageless in a way like maybe it's because people are trying to recreate it a lot nowadays but sure it's freaking gorgeous anyways and they were playing those and then this video came up about the history of shazam like the character and the mm -hmm. comics and yeah they it was apparently which i didn't know this i didn't know any of this that's what that's the point <laughs> the originally shazam was created as when as a not a as a reaction to the popularity of superman i guess yeah essentially yeah he he was he was uh fawcett comics was trying to come up with stuff and uh cc beck created captain marvel and uh and they took captain marvel and which was the name of shazam originally right and then we'll we'll get into why captain marvel is now marvel's character uh, in a very brief manner which i'm sure everybody has heard because it's all anybody's <laughs> right. been talking yeah, yeah. about for the past two months funny that they came out so close together too, yeah actually yeah uh yeah so cc beck uh created the character and called him Captain Marvel. He appeared in Wiz Comics number two for the, the first uh, issue. And, and if Matt you, does know all this off the top of his head, <laughs> by the way. He's not just going off the video that I saw yesterday. If you, and if you go back, and, and this actually did show up in the video, but if you go back and look at some of the issues that Shazam had or Captain Marvel had uh, back in the you know early days of Superman, you can see the covers are very similar. Yep. The powers are kind of similar. And uh, and even some of the lettering, like the fonts they used and, and all that, similar. True. Riz <laughs> comics looked a lot like the action comics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what ends up happening here is DC takes Fawcett Comics to court and says, this guy's Superman, and basically sues them to the point where they just can't afford into to... submission. Yeah, yeah, they didn't win. They just beat them into submission. Right, until and, so, and like, so, okay. so Fawcett made one deal with them, and it was that Captain Marvel can't do something. I don't remember what it is. Like, he can't appear in a certain way. According to the video, they gave him 400 grand and promised to never publish Captain Marvel again. Right. And so that, and, and at that, at that point, basically Captain Marvel was dead. There was no, they didn't really do anything with him. Um, and in that, in the process of that, Marvel came around and went, Hey, we're Marvel comics. His, Captain Marvel is free. We're going to take that. <laughs> oh, and, and okay. so they, they this took, wasn't in the video. No. So they took the, uh, they essentially took the, the license. They took the IP because it was gone. DC had nothing to do with it. It was huh. because DC sued Fawcett. They didn't sue for like, they owned the character of of Billy Batson and Captain Marvel, but they didn't own the name because now there weren't any books coming out. They weren't doing anything with him. Huh. He was just sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. And so they were okay, Marvel was able to take the name Captain Marvel. 1973 See, rolls this around. This is awesome. Like, like you're going to hate me, but I kind of want to get into the weeds on this stuff. <laughs> so so 1973 rolls around and that's when CC Beck and DC Comics go, "Wait, I have an idea." We can reboot Captain Marvel, but we can't call him Captain Marvel. So what do we call him? Well, the wizard's name was Shazam. 
We're just going to call it Shazam. It's almost like that's probably how it should have been from the beginning. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't... You know, Captain Marvel is definitely one of those, uh, if you think about it at the time... You know, we think of Captain Marvel and we associate it immediately with Marvel Comics. Right. Like, it makes sense. Captain Marvel, Marvel Comics, but this back is in the their days person. Of serials and stuff but, like but that. But Captain it's... Marvel's like your. The, the definition of Marvel, people going into these theaters and seeing something they've never seen. This is marvelous. You know, it's it's a big thing. And seeing the first superhero and, and all that, you know, it was like people knew superheroes. They saw comics, but they'd never seen them on screen. So that was like a huge thing. So 73 rolls around. DC and CC Beck get back together and say, hey, let's redo this. So 1973, issue number one right over there in my corner. I actually have another <laughs> one in a box. Uh <laughs> So they release that and then and and, uh, and it does really well. Again, it still it picks up has a pretty good following. And it was doing well back in the day too. It was. Like that was part of the problem is it was taken off. It was yeah, so so a huge part of the problem was that it was beating Superman out. Yeah. yeah. That was an issue for DC because <laughs> they were like, Well, we've got the Superman, you've got some idiot that's a kid. Uh so they, they went through and um and I, I don't remember how many issues they did in the seventy three run. I feel feel like it was a really small run it was only like a, a hundred issues maybe even less but they they went through and uh and all of the characters that that have shown up in in shazam at some point uh and they actually in the the jeff johns reboot they bring back some of the older characters they bring oh, back mary marvel we'll get there. and uh and uh, uh the the uh, captain marvel jr who's freddie freeman and uh so so they yeah they they built up this the Marvel family there's there was actually a book called the Marvel family and it was the Shazam the, family the Marvel basically. family it yeah. was okay. them yeah that's you know I didn't want to I didn't want to go out and no. say it like but. I said I'm a quick learner you these are. past couple days You're fast uh so 73 rolled around they did the run and then it just kind of petered out and they fell off the wagon again going we don't know what to do with this character. So then they started releasing some short books, like short, like 12 issue things. They started a, um, in the eighties, they started a book called, uh, the power of Shazam. And that ran 60, 70 issues. Um, hmm. they started putting him in the justice league of America. They started putting him in the justice league here and there. So he would kind of pop up in and out. And then the, uh, Alex Ross, got a hold of him and did artwork for the Alex, the Alex, the Alex Ross, Ross yeah. the greatest probably comic book artist of all time. He, uh, he got a hold of him and did, um, kingdom come and, and made Shazam a huge part of it. I gotta reread it. Yeah. Uh, and then there were, uh, Jeff Smith came out, did monster society of evil. And then there was the trials of Shazam. So he's had a bunch of books or he's been involved in things, but it's never been, he, they, they've, like I said, they just don't know what to do he with it. He hasn't him. been at the foreground for a long, long time. Maybe. And especially because of who he is and the way that character exists in the world, because he's a kid, he's still 12, 15, however old they're putting him in the, in the books. Right. And he has the mentality of, okay, I know what a superhero does, but I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And that actually becomes, that's a huge, huge point of kingdom come is him not knowing what the right thing to do is. And so, yeah, so, so they did all these like short run things. And then even in the new 52, which is the, not the most recent, cause they just restarted Apparently, Shazam. Yes, I found that out too. But prior to the most recent run where they actually gave Shazam a book, it's just his book called Shazam. Jeff Johns uh, rebooted the character in justice league he but it wasn't part of justice league it was they did they had an issue of justice league and in the back there'd be four or five pages of shazam and so oh, there, there wait, were that, and that's the new 52 book that that's I've... yes that's the one you have oh, okay. right so those were all just like four or five pages in the back of justice league and that ran i don't know five six issues maybe huh and to create this it's not a very long story yeah, say six chapters no it's not. yeah it's not a very long story and uh and and so that's where shazam went and then uh, the movie finally, after all these years, <laughs> Jeff Johns has said repeatedly, if the movie he's been trying to get off the ground for the longest is Shazam, that's what he has wanted to do. And so I think we're up to date now. And this movie was made based on that new 52 run that we just talked about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have no idea what they're doing with him most recently. Uh, similar. But, it's, okay. it's, he's still, he's still, um, the new 52. So actually this is a good spot. <laughs> Let, let's actually get into the movie. Let, okay. Let's, let's start right. this. So. So and spoilers, like we're not going to hold back at all. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't seen, I, I don't think it's possible. This is another thing we say to ruin this movie for you. Really? 
like if you want to see this thing if you're interested in it at all if you've heard good things about it which you should have you're still gonna have fun at this thing like i could have i mean you did you knew everything that was gonna happen in this movie (laughs) in fact i probably annoyed you by saying guess what's coming up and slapping you i know i slapped you on the shoulder at least because because i didn't uh, yeah so (laughs) my history with shazam like my actual history not just everything i've learned in these past two days or whatever is that leading up to this i kind of wanted to do some work so i got the new 52 run i read through that uh, but even before that, actually, I watched that, and this I did mention, the Superman Shazam cartoon. Yeah. I forget what it's called, what the actual title is. The something, I think, it had, does it have, does it say Black it's Adam The Return in of it? Black Adam or yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. But I thought that was a full length movie. <laughs> it's 20 minutes. It's, it's like 20 minutes. 25 yeah. minutes long, maybe at most. And I watched it and I was like, hey, this, that was pretty good. Like, it was super fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the strength of it was basically just that story. Like it's a classic story and I guess it's not even exactly how you, I don't know. You, you can tell me what the differences are, but they, they follow the new 52 thing as well, where he's a kid and when he becomes an adult, he's like still a kid in his head. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, But the, but that movie was basically him both getting his powers. Like there's the whole run in with the, with the wizard and everything. Like they're starting from square one with Shazam and then Superman's there to help him fight Black Adam and also kind of show him the way about becoming a hero and because it is so condensed into that 25 minutes. Like, I walked away being like, yeah, that was fun. That was actually really cool, you know? And then I read that New 52 book and I was like, why the heck was Superman in that stupid cartoon at all? <laughs> they need to do a just straight up Shazam right? cartoon. Like, yeah. it's so strong on its own. And that book is phenomenal. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so really good. good. I love it. Uh, that is, and that, that this is one of those funny things too, that, uh, there are Shazam fans that absolutely just lambasted. They hate everything Jeff Johns did. Really? Hate it. Okay. I mean, I can see how it's, it's in fact, it might have the same problem as that cartoon. Like it's a pretty tight, it moves pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, uh, I think it's gorgeous either way. And I think actually, you know what? Jeff Johns is on a freaking streak. I know, I know it's been a streak of longer than i even think because he's been around the longer <laughs> you know the, all this pop stuff that i'm getting to but i think that's part of his strength is he's taking stuff like this and making it kind of poppy but still like that the, the story that shazam the new 52 run it's not like super deep like no 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 no. but he deals with the themes in such an approachable way and such a fun way right i think it might be one of his strengths actually it's like that's probably what he's doing with a lot of these stories you know like yeah I also just got done with Blackest Night, and that was super great. That's a great, that's a really dude, great story. No. So yeah, I can see why people might be upset because he's maybe it's a little bit of gatekeeping. I don't know. Like he's making this stuff so sure. approachable and so popular that people are like, "Well, actually, there's so much more to it." Yeah, you know, I get that. But the this thing is, is also really good. But here's the thing: there isn't like <laughs> at, for as much as you peep these, some of these people want there to be so much more. There is not the the, and this is one of my thing that what part of the strength I think of Jeff Johns. Uh, work on this is and you just kind of said it is that it's poppy it's fun and it's not very deep because he's a kid (laughs) it doesn't need to be like that you don't not every comic needs to be the deepest it doesn't need to be batman you don't have to have this just laundry list of why batman is batman and oh no shazam he was a good kid he had the right heart even though he was even though he was a you know he's a he's an orphan that has a bad attitude about being an orphan for good reason why wouldn't you have a bad attitude he runs away (laughs) he doesn't really want to be part of a family all that but throughout all that he's still a really good kid at his heart and so yeah he's because he's good at he's good at heart shazam now you're now you're the champion and maybe that's what i mean when i call it a classic story like it, it there may not be much to it but it's such a solid oh here, here's a thought, by the way. Okay. I've, I've, I've thought this for years, and I've never ever shared this with anybody. Oh, wow. I think that part of the, uh, part of this is, um, it's King Arthur. He's given the power by the Lady of the Lake, who mm. happens to be a wizard. He is now the champion for everything. He ends up having his, uh, the knights with him. 
Yeah, it's it's sure. a very King Arthur esque story. It is, or uh, you know, a, a more of a Lancelot story, I guess. But or King, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, whoever no, he, got the, the, the sword the from the lady no. in the lake. I guess that was Arthur. I have no idea. It's Arthur because surpassed. now I'm now I'm thinking of Monty Python, and, <laughs> and then the, the one guy says you can't have a system of government based on some tramp handing out swords from a lake. That's true. Yeah. So good thing we're talking about Shazam, which we've done for maybe 22 minutes now. We will do words on the movie at some point also i think maybe we're there in fact so we went and saw the movie at the alamo draft house last night it was amazing and the alamo draft house i mean didn't yes no well do you need we'll to get to whether or not yeah, we love okay. the movie or not right. okay we'll get there didn't record last night and i had all these high-minded ideals about being your foil or maybe <laughs> reining you in a little bit because <laughs> This is the literal cinematic embodiment of your childhood and yeah. and life since, you know, like I was like, okay, I'll be there to kind of, you know, make sure things don't go too crazily or you don't go off the edge too bad. I'm doubting my ability at this point to help you much with that, <laughs> <laughs> especially after watching the movie. It's look, let, let's every <laughs> review you've heard about it being good. It is. It's good. It's definitely out of all of those uh to me out of all the comic book movies i'm talking marvel too this is probably the most kid friendly one because it is ostensibly big as a superhero which has been brought up a thousand times well number one alamo draft house showed, showed the trailer too big yeah which didn't i don't think i got that completely at the time but then there's also a callback in the movie in right. shazam so yeah which, which which I laughed out loud. I laughed out loud a lot of times. <laughs> that was the one you were trying was to think, remember last night. Out? You okay, were like, yeah. oh, I was crying about something. There was it was one that. I was literally laughing so hard I was crying. That might have been it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Um, the other thing I tried to do, which when we sat down, if also if people don't know, Alamo Draft House is a restaurant at the same time. You could order food while you're watching a movie, it's, which I did. Yeah. And ate it. Fantastic. <laughs> Didn't just order it no, to look at. It was good. Yeah. Uh, but I also thought to myself, oh, this might, I might also be able to take some notes on my phone here. And then they had the big thing at the beginning. And it was like, don't use your phone, idiots. <laughs> so furiously at the end, uh, I, I tried to jot down some things after the movie. But even then, I think it's only maybe four or five things. So we're going off the top of our head. I don't think it's going to be much of an issue for Matt. But uh, if, if we seem to stumble through some of the greater scenes or if it just becomes a love in, which... I feel like we get to do on this show because we get to choose the movies we want to watch. And yeah. more often than not, they're really, really, really good movies. Yeah, we, we really that ahead we, of time. We enjoy that. Yeah, at least one of us does. <laughs> but you know what? So what? <laughs> no, <laughs> we had fun in a movie, and we're gonna have fun talking about it. Right? Yeah, this was uh, it, it was it was a blast. I'm really glad we got to see it together because that's that. that's like the coolest thing was uh, this was all like fortuitous. It was it was not planned this way. It was it was seriously. We, we knew I was gonna come, right? But we didn't put the you know, like one and one together until. Until you yeah. gave me dates and you were like, if I'm thinking about coming on this date, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to fly in on this date. And I went, Oh, that's perfect. Cause the next day is Shazam. And you were like, well, that's it <laughs> flying in. So, so yeah, so we went and saw Shazam and, uh, and so do we, do we go, do we start here? <laughs> yes. All right. So, so the, <laughs> the start, just start talking about the, the, movie. Uh, the, 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 the conceit of this movie is, is two people's origins and it is the origin of the champion and the origin of the person who wanted to be champion. So the movie starts off uh, with a very young Thaddeus Servana in the back of his car with uh, um, Lex Luthor's dad from Smallville, John Glover. Oh, okay. It's I thought not... you were going to say within the DC universe. I'm like, wait, what? Well, I like, mean, that's... It's in Smallville, technically, but uh, John Glover, he uh, he's the dad and and uh, and and Savannah's uh, Thad's brothers in the car. They're getting into it. They're getting into fights and you know not having a great time. And we find out the dad's real mean to 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 Thad, and Thad can't seem to do anything right. And in the process of of him kind of being yelled at and, and smacked at it by his brother he suddenly is is they the father and son disappear the 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 car starts frosting over some symbols start showing up on the the uh the radio and then he is in the rock of eternity and he meets Which the wizard the, where the wizard or i guess where the champions of eternity have lived 
Right. Okay. So that the rock. Yes. <laughs> no. The, the rock. I like, I'm going to be saying things. You're just going to look at me patiently, like, "Yes, Ryan, that is." You're, well, no, you're it's, close it's good. No, enough. you're right because <laughs> because I'm I'm just kind of going through it. But he goes to the Rock of Eternity, which is where, uh, and it's a it's a magic place that that the wizard and and there was a council of wizards that are all dead now. Um, except for Shazam, and he uh, he brings that Played by Digimon Huntsu. That's right, Digimon. <laughs> what? He That's a tough spell. Though. He brings Thad- Thaddeus in and and tests him to find out if he is pure of heart, and uh, gives him the opportunity to become the champion. And uh, in the process of this, and this is actually something from the books, also the seven deadly sins were a, a big part of Shazam and and the the Rock of Eternity. The seven deadly sins are only being held captive in these statues by Shazam and the the power of the the council. But Shazam is getting older, his power is fading. The sins know this, so any person he brings in to become the champion, they try to talk into taking. Um, it, it's a it's basically a, a ball that they that that gives somebody the power to um, contain. The seven deadly sins. Ball o magic. Yeah, and it goes directly in your eyeball. Apparently, well, you can. Yeah, well, in but, this case. But the way it was done here was because okay, and why this is all important, I think, is because you're getting maybe at the first reluctance I had while watching this thing, and because also while Thaddeus is going through all this stuff, I'm like, so that's Black Adam, right? And you're like, no, silly. No, you delightful little bugger. That which I've read the story, so I should have at least. I don't know. Anyways, I knew it was him when he got the mind magic in his eye, obviously, because that's how it pans out in the book as well but the book does involve black adam like Mm -hmm. so there was a moment where i was like man i'm kind of bummed this doesn't have black adam in it and you're like well that's because that's the rock and it's going to be its own movie and then i was like yeah so then i'm still kind of bummed because i'm like they're not they're piecing it out like they've done with so many other things right never you know actually pans out except you get two movies instead of one so i was a little reluctant for that so once i did clue in that that was i keep wanting to say zivago Dr. Zhivago. Uh, Sivana. Sivana, thank you. Played by Mark Strong, which Always I forgot great. about somehow. Always love Mark so Strong. So amazing. That guy's that guy's top tier. But yeah, he got the magic in his eye, and then I was like, oh yeah, that's Sivana. Okay, I get it now. And Sivana, by the way, keeping this in mind, Sivana was actually Shazam's first villain, like in the oh. uh in the 73 run. He was like the first bad guy. It was oh, okay. him and and at the very beginning, as Thaddeus as a child is walking into the um, the Rock of Eternity, the camera pulls back and there's just a tiny little off to the right hand side a uh, in the frame. Oh right, right. A tiny little um, a terrarium with a a little caterpillar guy <laughs> sitting there, and I totally went, "It's Mr. Mind," and I and I was like, "That's it!" Like I wanted in, that in that voice at that volume, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and everybody heard it, and they were like, "Who the hell is Mr. Mind?" <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I I, uh, I was so like jazzed about that because I did tell Ryan ahead of time I was like if they do they've got to have at least one little cameo of Mr. Mind and I'll be super happy and it was right away and later actually and we'll later be, yeah. but we'll get to that we'll we get will, there I guess, I, see actually. I didn't want to spoil that okay. yet I wanted to bring that up later so Dr. Zavana is the big bad for this entire movie yeah uh, and pulls it off obviously it's Mark Strong you don't need me to tell you that but when he gets rejected by the wizard that is what you know puts the seed in his heart to get back at the wizard or get the magic back or I guess it's because in so, the book he's slightly high minded like he wants to resurrect his family right right and and part of that becomes at some point and I don't remember if it's I don't remember when but Mr. Mind actually kind of takes over and gives Savannah like he becomes oh, okay. he becomes almost worm tongue in uh, the Lord of the Rings movies where sure. he's like whispering into is him that a joke? and he does that no although <laughs> <laughs> I can't this is I just pulled a Ryan I can't believe I didn't catch that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but but he, so, in, but in this movie, it's all about revenge. Like he wants revenge on his family. He wants to prove that magic exists because that's the thing. And actually, we haven't mentioned that is that magic kind of occupies the same space in this movie as it does. I'm making a connection here in the Thor universe in the Marvel movie. Like magic exists even if it appears different to everybody else. Like this is that analog in the DC universe. I feel like, except in this particular case. So, so yes, I can see where you're going with this, <laughs> but for Thor, they they actually kind of they say you know it's magic for for us, but or it's magic for you, but it's science for us. Right, right, right. Um, they, in they in this don't case, define it that much. In this case, it's just magic. It's just and magic. actually, the wizard even mentions that the entire basis for magic stems from the Rock of Eternity. 
and oh okay he is he is and that's another part why he needs a champion because somebody needs to be able to be there for the rock of eternity and make sure that magic continues huh okay so enter billy batson enter william batty he is an orphan william and peter he batson is, by the way this is done really well in the book too because i didn't know enough about the character of billy batson and i feel like in the trailers they don't harp on it that much either but he comes off with and also it's a play against how he was originally like i'm guessing billy batten's i mean they showed a little bit of the serial in the movie too and billy batson is a golly gee whiz kid like he seems to be a very good kid in the, in the <laughs> yeah it, so in the in the original comics he was and, okay. and there's a reason uh dr savannah gave him the nickname the big red cheese because he's a big cheesy goober oh, okay all right that's that's why he called him that and dr savannah was the first one and i think that was an issue too oh boy <laughs> <laughs> so this movie this storyline in the books too the new 52 run play against that like at the very beginning, he is very golly gee whiz, and he's he's meeting his new foster family for the first time, who are going to take him in. And he's like, oh my gosh! Like I, he has some really good lines about you know, it reminded me of a job interview where it's like, what's your greatest weakness? And he's like, sometimes I try too hard, type thing. You know, like he has all the perfect answers, and then somebody leaves out the door, and his social worker and him just start going at it like right off the bat, like what a bunch of idiots, you know, like stuff, you know. Right. So they totally play against that. Billy Batson's not a good quote unquote kid. He's I'm in this movie. In fact, tell me how you felt about this. He's looking for his mom, which huh? he isn't in the book. He's just an orphan that, with a bad attitude in the book. In the know. yeah, in the books, he he always kind of uh, um, he's lamented his father more than his mother. Okay. But it's never and actually in the new Shazam stuff, they're playing off of that and and that his dad shows up and it's real weird. Okay, so honestly, I don't know if that added a ton to this movie like because it's not even really a thread throughout the the family is the thread throughout which it is in the books too but at the beginning it's a real good story in that he gets lost at an amusement park and his mom just never shows up to look for him anymore which is kind of a crazy story. like you don't you don't hear about stories like that i can't even think of another one so it's intriguing but they try to use it as, as, you know, he's obviously he's looking for his mom at the very beginning. And his social worker's like, I don't know why you're looking for somebody that never wanted you in the first place, ne- never came looking for you. Right. But then it's kind of dropped for a bit until the end when it's used to kind of bring him back. And I feel like we're in the books. It's really Freddie and the other kids in the home. Here they kind of turn it into his mom. Like, like I, said, they, I, don't, I don't know if that added too much. I didn't hate it, but they take a little bit longer for, uh, for, for Billy to recognize. Well, and, and this is actually, I, I don't, I didn't mind that. I actually liked it because it takes Billy longer to recognize what family actually means. And that's been the thing that has kept him going is that he wants his family and finally finding his mother after going through every Batson he could find in like the phone book and, th- and all that. Okay. He, he goes and finds her and he can tell you can, you can, I infer this. So it, cause it's not outright stated, but she is now not with his dad uh, she is with some guy named Travis. What a jerk. <laughs> Sounds but, like a jerk. But you can hear him yelling at her, and it seems like she is in an abusive yes, relationship. He does really sound like a jerk. Yes. And she makes it she makes it very clear that um when he was when he got lost, she knew where he was. She saw him with the cops and just turned around and walked away because she was 17 and didn't know what she was doing. Her uh, boyfriend, the father, was in jail, so she was alone with a kid that she couldn't do it. And uh, throughout that part of the movie, getting up to that point, Billy is given a uh, a compass, and he the, his mom wins he him a compass an amusement park at an amusement day, park, yeah. even though he wanted a tiger. It wasn't Which Tawny. Great payoff. Yeah, it wasn't honestly. Tawny. It but wasn't. He didn't get the tiger. No. We we didn't get the tiger. Yeah, really. I, it's, I can't wait though because we've got Jerry from The Walking Dead, which means Shiva might show up. <laughs> Who played his foster father? Yes, right? and I was bummer. No Ezekiel, but in any case, <laughs> man, Ezekiel should have been freaking Shazam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could have been the wizard, yeah. yeah no, I mean, sh- not Zachary Levi. I mean, Ezekiel should be, oh, yeah, like with, with the dreads and everything. Just straight up Ezekiel, not K- Kari Payton. Ezekiel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so I, I like that that she outright tells him this, and then she basically says, uh, "This isn't a good time." Yeah. Which he uh, at he, that moment when she when he finally re- yeah she's she's not a good person. No, and he, and he immediately <laughs> realizes it, and and he has. It, this is one of those moments where I feel like 
the he had the compass because the compass was always going to take him home and it finally did and the fact that it went to this he hands her the compass which is i i kind of inferred was it's a really good payoff i i i I inferred that he's saying find your way home well he hands her the compass because he's kept it ever since that day because he doesn't because she said something to him like that like this will help you always find your way right so he hands it to her in this grand gesture to be like you know like i found my way here you go and she says what's this Right, she doesn't remember doesn't what it is. Doesn't remember it at all. And it's that's and really that good moment. and right there is the moment when and it was this was one of the uh, Asher Angel who who plays uh, young Billy Batson, absolutely killed the role. Does a good job. And this particular moment was, I think, his, the best thing he did was he looked at her and he looked so broken, but he did such a good job of like that. I'm hiding it from you because I'm not going to let you see this. And he says. Okay, well, I gotta go. I've gotta go. I gotta go see my family. Right. And that's when he he he. I I think that's a combination of him shoving that in her face, but also recognizing that okay, <laughs> all of those people actually like me. Oh, when she says, "What's this?" He's like, "You might need it more than I do at this point." Right. So right. It's it's a very adult. I mean, yes, his path is one of the hero. Like he's becoming a hero. They do mention in fact. I want to say they mentioned the word hero more than they mentioned the word family, which I actually love because another doubt that I had, and again, we're going to spoil this thing, was something I didn't know happened at all when I was reading the book was that his entire foster family gets shazammed. Like he, yeah. they, they turn into shazams themselves, he, which I guess you have already mentioned a little bit because Freddie is, I didn't know this, Shazam Jr., I guess. Captain, what he, he was Captain Marvel Captain Jr. Marvel Jr. Yeah. Mary Marvel was always Mary Marvel. Yeah. Um, there was... Darla. But the, but those characters Eugene. like Darla, Eugene, uh, Pedro, they were not in they weren't in those books. Like oh okay, they didn't show up till the new fifty two. Oh, those are new fifty two editions. Yeah. Oh okay, all yeah, right. They didn't. So sh- I didn't know that they got shazammed or there was in uh, there was a Marvel family at all. I guess I should say. Yeah, and I mean there was a Marvel family in the seventies. It just wasn't that version of it. Is it does it follow the same arc? Like did they no. get their powers? Oh, okay. they get they get their powers from him. He shares them, but. Uh, it's just it's it's okay. it's done differently. It's such a great moment in the new books, though. Like when it happened, you're like, "Whoa, this is freaking rad!" You're like, it's it's like taking the that little part of Shazam, where like, what if you were a kid and you said a word and you turned into this freaking awesome superhero, and doing it like you know times seven, right? Like, <laughs> it's seven times and, better and it's cool because they all have like their own uh their own uh color uniform and then they're their own there's not seven of them they, what, how many there's six, five six five okay uh five. let's see eugene, five and shazam eugene I, I darla right. mary pedro and oh, but, and freddie so, so i was starting to doubt almost that that was going to happen because the movie wasn't harping on family the book harps on it a little bit like they say the word family i want to say the wizard says the word family and it, while it does have kind of the same turning point where he's like it clicks in his head and then he the wizard the wizard says to him at the begin before he gives him the powers he says i'm opening my heart to you yes in the movie and it's a lot more subtle in the movie i would say and i actually really like that yeah and and then the callback when the when the the family becomes the the marvel family essentially that's what kicks it off is he goes open my heart i right. have a whole family that that loves me i'm gonna love them back right now and actually so in that light mm. i actually you know what see i knew this would happen if i had any problems with the movies i could just come to you and to solve them <laughs> okay in that light the stuff with his mom actually i, li- I like it a lot more because it's <laughs> when you think back on it it like no i but i see i absolutely see where that that initial thought comes from because it does kind of it, it, it sets undersc- up an, another family in opposition like yeah that, you're right that like he thinks that's the family he's looking for when he's it's right. not yeah he's defining okay yeah <laughs> he's looking at me like that again guys <laughs> yes ryan <laughs> you got it one plus one <laughs> equals ryan uh so so i actually i really like that and i liked that thread i i think i also actually think it's that was important in kind of defining who he became as not as who he becomes not shazam not as he becomes part of that family but who he became that he was so dedicated and so headstrong about finding his mother that that's another thing that the wizard knows. The wizard sees that he has the wisdom of Solomon. Did the wizard uh, <laughs> see that though? Cause that's another great moment. I love from the 52 books that they did translate to the movie is when he brings in Billy Batson and he's like, Hey, I'm looking for a pure in heart. And Billy Batson's like, listen, dude, I'm not that guy. And also this world isn't that anymore. 
Right. Yeah. And basically says, I'm what you got. And I feel like in the movie, he already says that ahead of time. He's like, you're all I have, Billy Batson, because Billy Batson is reluctant. But uh, I don't know if, if the wizard did see that far ahead, maybe. It, it was it was the, uh, I think the wizard sees the exact polar opposite of, of Savannah, which is also, by the way, Savannah okay. is not the only one who had been called to the Rock of Eternity. There is a whole section where once Savannah is an adult, we we get, um, he owns, or he, he runs a, a lab in he Savannah funds, industry. Yeah. And he, he funds a lab finding uh, he, he tells these psychologists or, or whatever these doctors are that it's a it's a study on mass hysteria right. and all of these people were pulled into the rock of eternity and none of them knew or could figure out how or what and they start showing these people the symbols and they wreck he, he he finds people that recognize it and so he knows now that that the wizard is real and he can prove it but he doesn't know still doesn't quite know how to get there and I actually really like that because in the book he's just an archaeologist like he's on a dig and he finally figures it out and right he gets zapped in the eye and then that's how he gets into the rock of eternity here he's funding the work and then he finally gets the symbols he's missing and realizes he needs to write it seven times on the door instead of one and then he gets in that way and then that's when he gets he puts the the ball o magic in his eye i actually really like the way that was done like that was great. I, I might have even preferred it to the way it's done in the comics the one thing that i may and this is i just have this in my head so i gotta get it out get it out so to speak yeah let's get it out the one thing i did like better in the comics and i hate that discussion i truly 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 hate that discussion the movie as a whole i don't like it when people are like oh yeah this is good but the book is better if the movie stands on its own it stands on its own and i'm gonna love it i don't absolutely care yeah yeah about. uh but one thing i maybe did prefer and this is just again I, it's I, a flavor thing it's maybe if uh, maybe i'm looking for something wrong because i just can't because it's hard but at the end when he does pass his powers on to his family to the other foster kids he does it by having them all grab the staff and say his name whereas in the books it, it, he savannah's just like give me your power oh no sorry black adam's like just give me your power and he just like i think he just zaps him right there's no cane or staff no, or no, anything. No, no. he just zaps it into him and and instead of Black Adam getting the power. He's like, I don't feel any different. And then it pulls out and you see that he's zapped them all into Shazam. So right. I like that probably better than the way they did it. Cause in, in the book, he's got the staff, he's got his hand on the staff and then all he does is twist the staff and, and hit Mark strong off screen. And I'm like, well, that was kind of easy, <laughs> but, but at the same, on the same token, it, it's one of those moments to where, uh, where so okay so let's back up for just a few <laughs> solve it for me matt why do you think i'm telling you yeah come on so the movie in so many ways you have seen a bunch of what's going on in the trailers the trailers did a good job of showing you a lot of what he can do or he can't do i'm but, so glad they saved the whole marvel family though but they well they saved they saved a bunch of stuff like i, I they kept showing there's that that sequence the the, the little scene where um where the wizard says, say my name. And he goes, I don't know your name. And he says, Shazam. And, right. and then, and then, okay. <laughs> right. And I thought, okay, that's fine. That's cool. I like it, but, but I hope there's a little more around it. And what was around it was way better yeah. than I thought. And it was the one reference to black Adam right there is the wizard notes that, uh, <laughs> that he, <laughs> he, he created a chair. He, he, he found a champion once before, but the champion turned into a, uh, it turned into a revenge thing. And in the books, that's why black Adam becomes black Adam because his wife is uh, wife is murdered. And so he goes and basically destroys a whole bunch of stuff and then takes over, um, Kills his nephew. Kan Kandahar? So, Kandar? I can't remember. What Kodak? Yeah, who knows? I can't I honestly, say. now I just feel stupid because I can't remember. Yeah, what? Who I think it's are, Kandahar. Are you really the fan? No. We think you are? Probably not. <laughs> Black Adam's first appearance in the DC run was issue number 28. I'm oh, just going to say that. I've been holding back on Black Adam because I feel like he has an even weirder history that I that you've tried to explain to me at some point and I literally just right over my head and no, I no. want to know it's so bad now because I'm deep into this so, but I'm like scared to mention it okay so so here's Adam so Adam originally <laughs> originally so so his name is Teth Adam uh originally that's right this is yeah. he uh he is uh he he lives in this this country it's very similar in many respects and he is actually similar in many respects to Dr. Doom he 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 ends up becoming the champion he refuses to give the power up. He also never changes back. He stays as Black Adam because, and this is one of the things Billy figures out, if he gets 
Black Adam to say the word, he will turn into an old man. And he does in one of the books. He say, he makes Black Adam say the word and Adam becomes this old man and turns to dust. Withers away. Yeah. That, no, that's that's how he wins in the New 52, new 52. and in that Superman cartoon. Too. Right. So so Adam just, he he's... <laughs> the wizard in the books, they kind of make it a thing where, where they have to change back because if they don't, this could happen, <laughs> you know, uh, but Adam, yeah, he, 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 he becomes a champion. He, uh, takes over Kandahar, Kondok. That's what it's called. Kondok. He, uh, he, he, uh, he takes over Kondok becomes basically the, uh, the ruler. But the interesting thing about him is he basically stays in Kondok and he just says, don't come to my country. You stay away and nothing happens. People come in and he gets pissed. And if you, if people hurt people in his country, he gets pissed and he, he actually takes his country and his, like his people very, very seriously. And, uh, and well, that- he's given a greater treatment than a normal villain. Like he's, he's, I oh mean, yeah, it's not necessarily a new story, but he's one of those villains that thinks he's doing the right thing mm-hmm. or has a righteous justification for it. And they do in the new 52, they get on that a little bit too. Like he goes and saves he goes and kills a CEO of a company or something like that by throwing him out the window. Oh yeah, and it, well, and he he went and he stopped some wars. He went out and just picks up tanks and throws them. And he 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 tells like, and I think it's the U.S. government. He tells them, "Get out of my country, Man, or you are going to pay." I'm so stoked for that movie. I like, you know like and to see the Rock do it. Like I feel like there's something there, man. So I'm so curious how how what they'll do with that story because curious. they they've got some interesting stuff they can do. Um, but anyway, so, so they, <laughs> should we talk about the movie? So they, okay. they, they give, they, they, they give that one reference and, uh, which I had to go to the bathroom for, Hey, downside about the Alamo draft house. Here you go. I'm just, they're all bad. I got to bring in a bad thing about everything. Sometimes you got to go to the bathroom when you're just eating and drinking the whole time in a movie. It's true. I, I was dying and I was, I had to go from like 20 minutes in and I finally couldn't like right at the end. And I'm like, seriously, right at the end, like third act showdown. He's like, I can't, I got, I'm like, whoa, that must be pretty bad. It was bad. It hurt. I was in pain. Like they saw me walking, like going, oh. Uh, but you didn't miss much. I no. missed more than you did. I got back and you were like, that was the Black Adam reference. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> and you got back and I was like, Eugene did a Hadouken with his lightning powers. And that was it. You're Which like, still, I really wish I missed seeing yeah, that. Well, but, you know, I'll, I'm going to go see it again probably this week because Beth didn't see it. Hey. Uh, yeah. So so we, the moment, those moments with with Billy and the wizard are great. And, and <laughs> I don't know where we're going now. No, no, I'm so I like. I don't think we do. It was so good. Uh, so Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Okay. So we don't need to go through the movie beat no, no, by no. beat. In fact, I have the four notes I've furiously written down or the last four points I would make about this movie. And then we can, I mean, we can go on forever. I don't care about that. Sure. But if you're looking for an actual, like you want some guidance here, I got a thing. Well, okay. I, I, I guess let, let me, let me okay. do this real quick and then we'll, we'll go that. Cause All we right, might okay. be able to wrap it okay, up. Okay, okay. I, I was, um, I am not a fan of Chuck. The, the show. I don't like that show. It just did nothing for me. Your neighbor. So Zachary Levi was a really weird cast for me. But when they, I, and I, as soon as the first picture came out, I was like, yes, I'm into it. He looks great. I don't know how much time he spent with Asher Angel, but the way those two have, like they, they did a really great job. And actually all of the Shazam family did an amazing job when they become the adults, when they actually become the, you know, Shazam. Right. Because those kids are all so different in every way. And the people that they got to be the adults did such a good job matching the kids. In particular, uh, Adam Brody from the OC was dead (laughs) on as Freddie Freeman. And that, by the way, I want to say this. Freddie might be like one of my favorite parts of the movie. He was great. That fact, kid was I'm, great. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Cause I uh, thought he might be related to Fred Savage in some way. Also, by the way, I didn't do a synopsis for this. We didn't do an intro for it. Uh, and you know I why? Think the 20 because... minutes on Shazam beforehand might've been enough. <laughs> okay. I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> when young Billy Batson is pulled into the rock of eternity by a wizard and given the powers of Shazam, he must find out how to be a hero, wow. how to be a family man and how to fight the evil Dr. Savannah. You're not even reading anything. No. That was off the top of your head. Mm-hmm. You can't do a synopsis in the middle of the show, though. It doesn't count. 
Nope. That was actually all a lie. He is not related well, to Fred Savage. Now this whole part of the show is stupid. Well, it's kind of, uh, honestly, it's a it's a knock against him and anybody if they're not related to Fred Savage. But That's I'll, true. I'll get over it. You remember when Fred Savage was in Deadpool 2? <laughs> Once Upon a Deadpool. Once Upon a Deadpool. Did you watch that? No. Okay. Because I saw Deadpool 2. You should watch Once Upon a Day. I don't care. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. You said that they put in extra stuff. They, yeah, sh- they swapped stuff around. Yeah. Yeah. I do got to check that out. You do, do. Now I need to see. I want them to do a full cut with all of that stuff added with the regular, <laughs> you know? Oh, man. But then they'd have to add more stuff about how the stuff that they added isn't like referencing I'm the in. stuff they added back in very Keep well. Keep going. Oh, man. Okay. Hey, you know what? The fact what you just talked about in the movie uh, does correlate with one of the other issues that I had. And while the relationship with Shazam and Freddy is fantastic. You're right. There's chemistry there. They pull it off both as Billy Batons, Batson and as Zachary Levi. I'm curious. I think you and I might have the same issue. So I'm really curious. They come together. Like once he becomes Shazam, he seeks out Freddy again. Is like, hey, you have to help me out with this. You like superheroes. That part moves a little quick. Like he's a little not so shocked that he's Shazam. Like that's fine. I was actually totally okay with that. Yeah. But they do have a moment and they do kind of become friends. And honestly, I kind of thought the work was done. And then there's a montage of them like (laughs) testing out superpowers. And it's a montage that you would see to kind of form that relationship. And it certainly here strengthens it. But I didn't know if it was necessary. Like in the moment watching that, I was like, well, this is a little much. Like it's almost not just necessary, even though you have a ton of fun watching it, which was kind of been the saving grace of of some of this stuff that... It reminds me of, uh, it was one of the Pirates of the Caribbean. That, All of them? Uh, it was one of the sequels, the two or three, because that's very much just a single movie that they broke out into two movies. But the things that they used to extend those last two movies are still enjoyable. Like there's the whole beginning of, I want to say the second movie does nothing. Doesn't advance the story. Doesn't give you new information about the characters. Right. None of that. But I still liked it. I'm like, you know what? The second movie is the <laughs> only, like, that's the only sequel I liked. Oh, okay. I tried really hard to like the third one. Love the cast. I love the sequence where they're in that, the like, where they're meeting um, Chow Yun-Fat. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that whole part was cool. There's the lots of good it. stuff. But yeah, yeah it was just, definitely the third one's weaker. But I guess I got a little bit of that here. I'm like, you know what? This is fun, but I'm not sure it was necessary. And in the moment, I was kind of like, well almost teetered on getting old or too much i guess is that what you thought i was going to say no it's not oh okay i i did think it was going to be a freddie freeman related thing though um because mine is kind of a i have a freddie freeman okay, kind of issue you. uh but i do want to say that i think um that montage is actually necessary and i think it's necessary in this movie for two reasons number one it it really starts to underscore how much of a cheese he is because he's an adult doing really sure. stupid things. But the other thing that I think it helps with is Shazam is not a big character. Nobody is not. No, I shouldn't say lots of people are not familiar with this, this character or what he can do. So it's a good way of, of showing where his powers are at. And that way later in the movie, okay. you're not surprised that, Oh, he can fly. He knows how to do this. Now he can punch things really. We know that he has these abilities without being brought into well why he can do that now he can do that now you know that makes sense because any other superhero movie especially origin story which this is an origin story yeah that takes place in the first act right or you know in a lot of ways this is the first act is completely dedicated to billy batson as a character and you know that idea of family and him getting into his foster home so yeah it's almost like you're just getting a second first act within the where he's learning you know he's breaking all the doorknobs off that's that's my favorite example of of superhero superheroes learning how to use their powers as they rip a doorknob off a door at some point like <laughs> my my favorite one for for this montage was him looking at the camera and then flicking the uh i think it was a, a, du- a barrel a, a barrel yeah. it just goes sailing and yeah. then dense that cracked me up i was just I'm so t- it was good it was fun like and i didn't then, have a problem with any of and that I, and i will mention this i am so glad they cut the the um <laughs> the actual punch to uh the sequence in the convenience store because everybody's seen the part where he gets shot and he laughs and then he goes, you're dead. Oh, that was it. That was the other one. I was crying because they, they find out he's, he's bulletproof 
And then Freddy's like, oh, but he just shot your suit. You got to shoot him in the face. And then he's like, yeah, shoot me in the face. And he goes, wait, what? And then they start <laughs> shooting him in the face. <laughs> and and it's really funny because oh. the way they film that, they actually did a really good job of, of doing like little dimples I on him. when crying. The, when the bullets hit him, there's like little dink, dink, dinks. And he goes, oh, and that's when he does the face and he goes, you're dead. Oh, and then, oh and then that follows up, which, which again, this is perfect because this came out of, uh, I think the new 52. He, uh, he goes and, and and they 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 do that and then he buys the beer and they go outside and drink the beer and they spit it all out. They get, <laughs> it tastes like vomit. And then the next scene is them coming back out with just candy and sodas. And that's perfect because that's right. you know that's him. And that whole sequence was great. Um, but here's my issue with Freddy. Okay, I did not like how contentious they got how that that quickly. That it goes from Freddy's helping him to Shazam. Like it, it turns into Freddy hmm. wants to use him because he keeps getting beat up. And so he's he's I'm gonna I'm gonna have my best friend. I know Shazam. I know the hero. And uh and so you're gonna have to uh, at, at school Freddy is not popular. No, at yeah. all. And, and and so he's gonna have he wants Billy to show up as Shazam at lunch, and then Billy doesn't. Billy goes off and and realizes he can make money and he's do been, selfies he's literally busking isn't yeah it? like for <laughs> he's sitting there listening to um uh well, what was I it the tiger i got the tiger and he's going lightning out of my hands <laughs> at the top of the steps in philadelphia yeah, like, and shooting lightning out yeah. and that actually leads to the sequence um where the bus flies off that's he accidentally a bolt goes up and down and then that's where he has to catch the thing and Prior to that, while he's doing the the uh, the lightning bolt song, Freddy comes up to him and is really angry with him about not showing up at lunch. And it's one of those sequences where they're both really selfish about the whole thing. Actually, that, and that's why I liked it, because it wasn't one sided like it wasn't just I want to say even in the new 52 run. It's it's pretty one sided like Shazam is the guy or, or Billy's the one that that kicks off freddy and freddy's pretty blameless in the in the argument well and i think that's also in the new 52 that's part of the reason i think that they wanted to at least give them the the, the powers okay. like, in terms of writing i mean but yeah in the movie it's like freddy is totally using him as a as a, to kind of increase his station at school right and, and there was it, it was <laughs> there were so many it, it was like it was all of this contentiousness in a really short amount of time and it started really quickly and the content like the the fact that they were totally different like that they were both blameful <laughs> yes was that's great definitely it I, I i i did i agree with you on that that's awesome that there there was a there was no right person in that situation yeah, i mean I, they were both basically wrong and i feel bad i wish i had some way to solve your issue but i didn't have an issue with it myself but i couldn't really tell you why I mean, no, I mean, it, it's not that it doesn't work. It just, I, I just, I guess I wanted a little more build up to, to them having that problem. You know, it was like, because it, it's like, it's a flip, it's a switch that flips. They go from Freddy's helping him and they're having fun testing out his powers to come to lunch as Shazam and then done. And now they're fighting. Well, you know what? Relatively actually. Yeah. I mean, because that middle part that I talked about does go on for so long and it's after kind of the work has already been done. Yeah. When they do become at odds. Yeah. It's only like three scenes, maybe at the most, like right. and they then, walk and then up to school and he walks away. And, and, and then, you know, the, the, I actually kind of appreciated this in, in terms of you, uh, they, they, he catches the bus and Freddie comes over to him and is like, they're having a conversation and because he just caught a bus there are cameras all cameras all around so people are videotaping it and as that and that's also the moment where savannah shows up and they first meet billy is still confused about his power so he's running away doesn't even know how to fly yet right yeah. he uh he ends up uh they end up in a mall and and uh and he changes from uh shazam to billy runs off Savannah sees Freddy screaming for Billy in the mall and then On also TV sees a TV mall, yeah. w him talking to him. So they follows and that's pretty much the end of the contentiousness right there yeah. is Savannah now is taking the, the, the family and, and working on, on them basically yeah. to, to get Billy. 
which was great. I, I, I think that, issues with that no, that that was that worked. It made sense. All of it was, you know, it all fit. The math about how because he inhabit the the seven deadly sins live inside Savannah. How each time they left, he became weaker. Right. I like that. He becomes more human. Yeah, he becomes more human. Which, which, by the way, the sequence where they figure that out is is fantastic because it is right after Savannah takes the kids. He opens up the door to the the Rock of Eternity. They go in. Uh, Savannah has the staff and he's telling Billy to give him the power. And uh, in the process of this, the kids show up and one of them throws a replica battering at his mm-hmm. head. And, uh, and, and that's when they realize that he can bleed if the sins are not fully right. inside, if all that's of them good. are out. But we never see all seven sins outside of the first, uh, outside of the, the moments where they're statues. Yeah. Because... We might really spoil the movie. This is here d- here's this your giant spoiler. This is where this is the what'd you call that? The spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you call it? This is the solution. I don't know. That's why I, I was asking you. <laughs> it's a spoiler. This is the solution to the equation, like the one thing that the movie turns on that that solves. Like, Which I loved. I actually thought this no, was yeah, great because I did yeah. not think about it until that moment i actually i thought about it i was like you know what they're not mentioning the one because he gets all the seven the six sins out of him so he's got one that never leaves him and i i didn't think about what it could be to the story right right but i did i was always aware that there's still one left in him i kept counting them i did i was sitting there going two three four five i didn't i couldn't tell who they were though i mean i knew who uh uh, there was one that he mentioned oh i knew who greed was because he gives his dad to greed yeah greed has, everybody else greed is, uh, greed is ridiculous goro actually no the fat one i could tell too obviously for yeah gluttony yeah uh but but the uh so savannah never he he always has one left inside of him and billy figures out that it's envy and that envy is the thing that he wants because he envies billy he envies that billy and part of the part of this comes up earlier where he where savannah is basically grilling him and saying what makes you so worthy how was i how was i not as worthy as you right. and it's a great moment because when they do get to the point of billy realizing it's envy that stuff just opens right up and you think back and go oh <laughs> it's cool yeah it's really yeah cool. it was a kick in the nuts i didn't see that one coming and then for some reason goads him out by yes. literally playing into every gets him out and then not only does does not only how he gets him out because once he gets out mark strong falls to the ground and almost off the building but then envy tackles shazam gets right on top of him and then the way he <laughs> kills him is by calling shazam so the lightning bolt comes down chains him back into billy and zaps envy. and, it, and it's it's great it's because great, because uh, uh zachary levi looks at him and goes gotcha <laughs> and, then, and then and then and then there's that shot of of the 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 um the envy monster kind of looking at him weird and then shazam Zap, yeah. and you know, I I will never get tired of hearing that said in a movie, and then just seeing the lightning bolt. I believe you. I I just will not. And and man, all of those sequences that they showed in the commercial when he's at the uh, at the fair and he he's walking and he just says Shazam, and then he's still walking. Like I well, but it's still. You're not even talking about the greatest one. Do you not even want to spoil that? Well, one? my favorite one is definitely, I and mean, they show it in the preview. It's him. Do they show it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, with, with him running, it's it's uh, he runs off the building and says, and it's and at sc- the moment where he's really embracing his his hero ness, your hero, his heroism, herohood, heroism, yeah, mm, his, his no, heroine. because it's like he becomes a hero. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. All right, cool. But yeah, he he uh, Billy Billy gets up on top of a roof and just takes a running leap and just says Shazam it's gorgeous. and it's takes off and great. it's a wonderful moment. It's it's a really great moment and uh I I couldn't have asked for m- much more. I mean, honestly, this is this was kind of a perfect Shazam movie and the fact that it was very very clearly aimed at as a family movie is great. I love that this is, you know, you can take your kids to this movie and the really there's only one or two parts that might freak them out and it's you don't see anything and it's it's honestly there's it's like, a couple yeah, it's I, I want to take my daughter and she wants to go super bad, but there's I've, I was 
There's a strip club that they go back to a couple times. But you never see anything. They no, go you never in, see anything. They it's go just, in and they walk right out yeah. and it's kind of a gag. And uh, and then um, the, one of the seven deadly sins bites somebody head, somebody's head off. That but was you, the most violent I think it ever got. Yeah, yeah and you don't see you don't and there's see no anything. blood. No, no, no. It's, it's, you don't even see the head come off. You see him you see him kind of bite the head and, and then, cuts. and then he throws you it see out the, the head wind. enveloped by the teeth mouth. Right. And then he gets thrown out the, the character, the dead guy gets thrown out. Oh, the that window. was good. And that was, uh, Oh no, no, no. The guy with his head get getting bitten oh. off also gets thrown out the window. Right. Okay. But, but Savannah throws his brother out the he window does, right, yep. in a terrific way, <laughs> in a terrific way with a good one liner, which was, I won't spoil. No, but it was very, uh, uh, Mace Windu. <laughs> Uh, so okay you just said you couldn't ask for much more is there is i'm taking that to mean there's maybe still a little something you would have wished for or well, I mean, you just wish there this went on for several more movies no it's i want more movies okay, i okay. mean there, there's in terms of this being an origin movie getting everything in there no it was freaking great if i had more you just want more like more Mr. Mind and you just well, want sure. I mean, Black Adam. I mean, come on, okay. you, you know, I want to see I want I am looking forward to. And if they don't do if like if this falls off, it's going to be the biggest loss of DC's to me. It's going to be I DC's. Looked. Is this I mean, I know word of mouth has been good. I haven't talked to anybody that hasn't liked it, but I don't know if it's doing well. In the no, no, no. The movie is doing fine. Is I'm okay? talking about him fighting Shaz- uh, fighting Black Adam. If they don't make that happen, it's to me the biggest loss DC has. You've ruined You've ruined what you had with Shazam because Ooh. because and I'm not saying the, it takes it makes the movies worse or bad. No, no. It, it's definitely that you have you have totally lost the biggest uh, uh, villain he has because we're so excited for that, too. But actually, you make a good point, whereas there are some movies and I've heard some talk of this, especially lately with Endgame coming out, Avengers Endgame. Uh that if that's bad, that if they flub that whole thing, does it decrease the value of all the movies before it since they're all kind of tied in? Right. I don't think that could happen to Shazam. Like this movie, like the number one, the Black Adam thing is just kind of a little thing that they no, hint it's, at. It's, like there could be no movie about it ever again and it wouldn't be, no, you no, know, no. like a thing. But just regardless of all that, this movie stands on its own so well yeah. that I don't see it being diminished by even if, it, yes, it would... I think it's a huge loss. Be I think very it's very sad the, if they squandered the, the opportunity. It, it would be but. the biggest. That's it. They, they, if they, it would be the biggest opportunity squandered for them, in my opinion. Um, the second biggest opportunity that DC could make and squander, and I'm not even joking about this. Okay. Uh, ben Schwartz from uh, Parks and Rec. Right. He, uh, he has been lobbying to play Plastic Man. And, <laughs> oh. What? And somebody somebody photoshopped his head onto Plass's body with the glasses and Oh my god. I could not think of a better person. The only I don't even need to see that shop. The the only the only other character I could totally dig him being is uh he would probably be a really good booster gold. Oh, but but he is mm. perfect for for Plastic Man because he's such a goob. He's so funny. And Booster's he, not really I don't know much about him, but I don't feel he's a comedic Oh no, Booster's funny because Booster is dumb. Like he he's from right. the future. He yeah, thinks no. he can do everything plastic right. Plastic Man's a much better fit. No, there. Plastic Man's yeah. great. In any case, moving <laughs> I, I want to mention uh the final two spoilers of the movie because I think okay. I think the end of this is is pretty obvious. You know that he's gonna he's gonna he he doesn't let Savannah fall off the, the, the building. He saves him. Mm. He uh the the family comes comes together, they all become Shazam, they all get their their th- their powers, uh they all use them in different ways. It's really fun. Uh they are the ones who basically stop the seven deadly sins. And uh, and then we 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 roll out and, and it's the end of the movie and uh, the end of the movie is um, uh, Freddie sitting down at lunch and then the rest of the family showing up and Mary oh, and right. Pedro and Eugene all sit down and Darla and he's like I thought you guys all had different lunch Darla, periods I, I mean it's impossible to talk about anything everything oh, she was great so good and she was the one one of the the few her and Pedro were the two I was like Pedro oh man was what are you gonna do with them because they're hard and and they did it really well they're those were great. Good. But but Freddy sits down. The family shows up except for Billy, and then Shazam walks in, and he goes and 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 it was a big deal because cheesing it up <laughs> because the entire because the, they show it more than once where Freddy is just getting like destroyed by the school because nobody believes him. Right. Uh, so Shazam walks in and he's like as loud as possible. Freddie Freeman, what a great right. guy! <laughs> he taught me everything I know about being a superhero. You guys should really take some pointers. And uh, and so they kind of make a couple of jokes, and then 
the uh the one this is maybe the biggest disappointment in the movie is <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> no it, it is for one specific it, reason yeah so yeah. so this has always been a thing they throughout the movie they make it very clear that this is in the dc universe superman exists they have papers of superman batman, batman is around yeah. aquaman is called out and uh and at the very end Superman walks into the lunchroom with a lunch tray. You don't see his face. No, it's totally the it's totally the uh, Man of Steel, and that's the bummer is that they couldn't get Henry Cavill. And I think my memory seems to think that it was because there are no other movies lined up for him, so he wouldn't do he it. He made it. Yeah, he did an Instagram or something that he's done. Like he's not the guy anymore. But I think more disappointing is they didn't even get a Cavill body double. Like right. The, yeah. The Superman was like a really thin dude. He looked small. Yeah. Yeah. And Cavill's Cavill looked. He was a big, a big dude. Cavill big. Uh. <laughs> so so that that ends the movie, and of course, uh, there is a little bit of a bumper to it, and the bumper was I definitely. <laughs> I think I clapped. You and might I, have I, gone crazier for the bumper than anything else in the I, show. I was so excited because, as I mentioned earlier, I was super just jazzed about seeing Mr. Mind. And we we catch, uh, we find Savannah in jail doing a Sam Neill in, in the Mouth of Madness where he's writing all over the walls with a crayon. Which, by the way, I think it's really funny because that, that sequence where he's writing on the walls in the crayon, mm-hmm. immediately I thought of In the Mouth of Madness with Sam Neill doing that, partially because the um, the guy who runs the asylum or whatever Sam Neill is in, John Glover. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's really funny, his dad. Mm. Uh, so Savannah's in there drawing or writing all these. He's trying to write the symbols so he can get back to the Rock of Eternity. And he finally breaks the uh, the crayon and he starts hearing this really like echoey, metallic voice. And as soon as the voice came up, I hit Ryan. I was like, it's Mr. Mind. It's Mr. Mind. And uh, and sure enough, they pan over and he's looking around trying to figure it out. And then there is Mr. Mind with his little talk box sitting on a on like a sill and telling him that he can help. And <laughs> and uh and man, that was like, <laughs> like that setup for me is just, I can't, I can't freaking wait. I'm going to be super disappointed if David Sandberg doesn't direct the next one. Like he's already said he wants to, he's already, he's already put it out there. You know, it's funny. We spent some time looking this up yesterday because the movie appears to have been made with so much love. I'm like, number one, what have these guys done before? And they haven't done anything huge. Horror movies. Really? Really? Uh, nothing that that uh, which you know what i guess that's becoming a theme like people that uh, it has been for marvel at least you know yeah they got the guys who directed a whole bunch of episodes of community <laughs> here <laughs> make a movie captain america go talking about russo yeah the, the russo did a- development did they do some community too oh wow okay but no i was i was referring to was it james gunn and uh the uh, spider-man i can't remember his name now did cop car also Kevin Bacon. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, oh, oh, uh, uh, John Watts? Something yes, Watts? maybe. Yeah, I, can't. I don't know. But Shazam appeared to have been made with so much love. I was like, they could have gone wrong in so many different areas with this thing, especially where you feel like the DC movies haven't seen the same amount of success or they're kind of floundering. Like that universe is floundering. Let's. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, is. for sure. They're, they're not as much as I like those movies and I'm totally good with them. I'm in the minority. Right. But they hadn't really done anything that, that, I don't know, led me to believe or understand how this movie was made seemingly so lovingly unless they weren't fans of the franchise. If they, unless they were, well, I mean, maybe they just see the value in doing a good job. I don't know. I, David Sandberg, he, he made one movie I did not enjoy, which was Lights Out. I was not a fan of it. Um, watched it twice because I was the first time I, cause I kept hearing about how good it was. A bunch of the people that I follow, like horror people on Twitter, are like, oh, this is a great movie watched it twice. I was like, this movie just drags and sucks. Huh. Beth was fine with it. I just didn't enjoy it. It, it just had nothing going for me. Well, I guess so. And I, I like lo- Maria Bello a lot. And she was just, it was just a good. bad movie. A for bad me. Bello. You found a bad Bello. I found a bad Bello. Uh, and you don't want a bad Bello. <laughs> no. You don't want a Brian Bellows. Um, but, but then uh, he also did Annabelle creation, which I did enjoy qu- oh, okay. quite a bit. Yeah, that's right. But still, it wasn't that wasn't like a runaway that you would think, or no, it's, or not it's a, still niche, maybe even. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it was not. I mean, it did well. All of the Conjuring based movies do. That's why they keep making them. Right. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't something crazy that was like insanely good. But I really liked it, and and seeing 
seeing guys come from which which is funny because James Gunn did it too. James Gunn came from horror. He came from trauma. He came from this is like I like blood and guts. I want to kill people. <laughs> to Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Paraphrasing maybe, but right. yeah, no, yeah. he said that. Okay. Uh, and and so yeah, I I love seeing that because so many people get their start in horror, and then my my I think my biggest like concern quote unquote is I don't want them to stop doing horror and i know james gunn's not james gunn's got another movie coming out or producing something and it's horror based and that's cool i just don't want them to stop doing that sure, but sure. but i agree man it, it seems like i don't know if sandberg was familiar with the character or what but i know like Z- levi wasn't when he found out that he was gonna like kind of do well, this that, that i could see i mean number one well i just think it's great that he dug into it yeah he, no, i mean no, he definitely. dug into yeah, it yeah he did you know but i got that feeling from levi over the years even if i didn't like i didn't i didn't even get as far as you did on chuck like it just didn't didn't appeal to me as no, much. It just didn't but he click. seemed like a cool dude that does right. good work or works hard so that part i guess maybe didn't just surprise me as much i guess just thinking whether or not i, I do want the next shazam directed by i can't even remember his name from one minute to the next david what, sandberg yes david sandberg I, I guess i don't know because this one seemed so out of left field or i, I can't pin down anyways but yeah, probably let him keep doing this until he screws it up. Maybe at the that's very what end. I feel like. Who's doing the Black Adam? Do we do we know it all? Don't know. Okay, uh, some... because it, this is what uh, Black Adam is being exec produced by The Rock by Dwayne Johnson. So he kind of is getting a little bit of uh, feed. Huh. he gets to feed things. He gets to decide on the script. He gets hmm. to kind of pick people out. So this it's going to be an interesting question about does Dwayne Johnson make the right choice with the scripting and all that, or does he? And, and I'm not sure. I don't know what the holdup is. I actually think the holdup might just be his schedule. But well, I don't and that's think... what I'm considering actually right now is if, if I, mean, I don't want a Black Adam movie that's a rock movie as we've been getting rock movies for the past. Biggest concern about here. it is that I don't think he can do it. I don't think he's a good Black Adam because he is somebody you can't see as anybody but the rock. Oh, I he's, don't know about that. I but. have not seen him do anything. Pain and Gain is like the closest thing where, I, okay, sure, I'll give him, okay, Pain and Gain and uh, Be Cool. Be Cool, he tried to I'll do give him, I'll give him, yeah. I'll give him something there, but every other movie he makes, and wait, what's Black Adam going to be? It's an action movie. You know, it's not going to be, that's not going to be the kids movie. That'll also, be. Also, if you get too Egypty in there, like you're just thinking about the Scorpion King, which doesn't help anybody. Or Prince of Persia. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's Persia instead of, but in any case, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, okay. one, one more moment, and I think we can end. Actually, I no, have, keep, I have one going. more. I okay. have one more funny you thing. You keep that going, I, and then I'll. And I have tie it up with my favorite scene. I oh, I don't. It's not a scene. I have, I have just a funny. My scene is a favorite scene. That's okay, scene. let's talk about your favorite scene because no, no. the thing that I have is is my not... my favorite scene is a good capper. Okay, I wanted to point out that DC's run. Almost makes no sense when you think about it. How did they screw up? So I think Man of Steel is a legit movie, but it and it did well, but people generally don't like it. How do you screw up Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, The Suicide Squad, Justice League, and yet Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam are the best movies? How? <laughs> How are those it's the great, best right? movies? I mean, Wonder Woman makes sense because Wonder Woman is part of the Trinity. The fact that they got one out of three there, <laughs> good job, guys. You know, and g- genuinely, I like all three of those movies. I mean, I like I do not. I like all but of yeah. those movies, but I know you weren't you did not enjoy Yeah, we've got issues. That's another cast. Yeah, you didn't I yeah. you didn't enjoy Aquaman, did you? No, I did. Oh, it was Wonder Woman. In fact, your your top three, I'm I'm lock, step, and barrel heel all right hmm. sounds good that's it though oh. i just thought that was really funny that i'm thinking about that right now that that no sh- i had thought about that, that. shazam right. yeah. and and aquaman are basically the two biggest and probably best dc movies it's true yeah i mean i guess i'm just trying not to get into it but man of steel i like that movie a lot i, I know you do and i don't hate it as much as people i i think that's where we agree is that we don't hate these as much like we've had good words to say about batman versus superman <laughs> i still about really enjoy it. justice league which really enjoy it. yeah I, I don't know really but yeah i've watched it like more, four I, times in the past no, I'm three talking, months <laughs> i'm just differing with you is all but still i feel like we're pretty forgiving with that stuff man is still my only issue was uh, uh i guess all my issues but I mean, all the moments with his dad were gorgeous and beautiful and perfect and delivered on the trailer. Loved the rest it, of the yeah. movie 
didn't really, even though I liked Zod and I liked the math that resulted in his death, Mm -hmm. even though, and this is where I can talk about the final, my final thing about Shazam, the whole ending of Man of Steel where they just murder a zillion people. And I know it's collateral and that's just, we're not supposed to think about it, but it was loud and stupid and didn't, didn't work. I, I see. And that's, that's one of those things for me. I just hate it. I hate that argument. I hate that discussion because like, it's like, did, did you ever read a comic book? I know. Like that, how, how does it, that, how <laughs> tell me how that's the reason people are like, you would never do that. How many freaking times has Batman driven into something? You don't think he's killed no, people. You are you know, absolutely it's like, right. It's because it's, it's an of argument those, of evolution. It's just one of those things for me where I'm like, it's so no, no, stupid. You're right. you know? There's no justification for it. The only argument is, you know what? We've been doing this for so long and I want this to be more and to be better, you know, but you're right. If, if I get in my head and I'm like, you know what? It's like every other, like I said, two seconds ago, you're supposed to not think about it. That's right, right. absolutely what it was supposed to be. You're supposed to just enjoy it for what it is. I guess I couldn't do that for that in I, that moment. He, and here, here's where like, if you don't like that movie for a variety, that's fine. Like I, I'm not, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind, but I didn't hear anybody say anything about Nolan's Batman's. Freaking no! Batman kills people in that movie. In not, those movies, not as bad though, dude. They Wait, he a city, all he does, man. all Batman does, he pulls out the machine <laughs> no. gun one time. There's explosions no, that no, kill you're people. You're right. You're right. Like, there's no difference. No, there you are know? plenty of moments, and I said these are the things we're supposed to forgive. Where you're like, there's no way that dude survived that car crash that you just caused, right? Right. No. Like he kills people. People die within the course that you're not supposed to think about. But <laughs> maybe it's an argument of degrees thing because they level a city. But it's so terrible. It's, that's why this is why I didn't want to get it. Why, the, how this ties into my favorite scene, perhaps of Shazam, the, where I wasn't laughing myself to tears, <laughs> was in the final battle, where and this is where I'll, I'll draw the line. They figure out how to have a battle downtown without leveling buildings and killing civilians. Sure, I mean, <laughs> you know, I okay, don't. It's okay, it's okay, okay. It, <laughs> <laughs> But they do that by maintaining a also sense of space. I thought I thought the whole final scene in Man of Steel, like you never knew where anybody was, but True. it didn't really matter because and of they were just because they were all over they, Metropolis. Yeah, yeah, and and, so. and that is that is one of the things that I actually really like about this movie. We talked about it is it's out of all of those movies. This one is way more intimate. The choreography is really good. You know where people are in relation to one another during that scene, though, that final battle, they are fighting and they uh, uh, I forget. I don't know. The, it, I think it was right after the funny part where Mark Strong is like a mile away and giving his big old. I was dying with he's that. Giving this big dialogue and Zachary Levi's like and they're floating ten blocks in away. Yeah, they're and he's floating like, I can't in hear you. But then they come together and they come together. This might have actually been before. I don't know where it is in direct relation. But they come together in front of a window where a child is playing with his Batman toy yes. and his Superman toy, and Shazam punches. Uh, Mark Strong, I keep calling him Mark Savannah. Strong. Savannah. Just Savannah, just into the ground, you know, and it's a great moment. And we don't even see the kid again. We just see the Batman and the Superman toy fall Drop to the ground. <laughs> Was, that's one of those like, <laughs> hey guys. And they're right. Like they called it. Like, and I totally agree. Like this Shazam has its place and it is among those top three. Yeah. I, I don't even try to rank those three, but actually, you know what? No, Shazam is number one. <laughs> I, I, yes, I know. And that's maybe where I can temper you a little bit. Like I would, it needs to be a discussion. Actually, we had this discussion very quickly. Whether or not it tops Wonder Woman, because I think it tops Aquaman at the very least. Whether or not it tops Wonder Woman, there are no moments that top the No Man's Land sequence from Wonder Woman. I, I don't know that any, like the closest thing we've seen that gets to that is I do think they had a moment that was really close in Aquaman, but it still wasn't. I still and, need to watch it again. And it's when, he, it's when he is being chased straight down and all of the, like the sea creatures, the evil, I don't remember That's what they, true. they're all coming yeah. down. Like that is an epic moment. But and even then, still, it's like visually, like it doesn't have the the gravitas that that, that no man's land. No, because and partially because with with the no man's land thing, it's a it's that called that is, no man's land. Not too. only that, but it's which I mean, yeah, it's a little on the on the nose with that. But it, it's the uh, it, it's also the fact that that you know Aquaman is is swimming as hard as he can, whereas Wonder Woman is walking out into bullet storm. Mm-hmm. She pushes forward and then just wrecks everything. Right. <laughs> and you can't like 
that's just not something that you can do. I don't even. I don't. I legitimately don't think you can do really anything like that with Shazam. That's not who he is. No, no, is, that's, that's a different movie. So and, yes, and apples and oranges to some degree. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I think they still they're still in the same world, but I I think that finding a, a a moment that epic for him is like the only way they do that i th- i think okay is, a, is a black adam situation yeah, and it's got okay. it's gonna be it's gotta be a, a big thing with you know condock or something but yeah i just don't think you can do that with shazam or it would be something like suited to shazam it wouldn't look the same like in fact there might be a no man's land moment for shazam in the Shazam movie. Like there are plenty of moments where he has that heroic stature about him, you know, where, you know, that, that thing of him jumping off the roof isn't really a sequence, I guess, but I think that's a moment, you know, I think that maybe the closest moment I would put is at the fair. And it's that moment where Billy just walks out, says Shazam. Well, okay. It would actually be the moment, that entire moment leading up to that, where he consoles the kid by giving him the tiger. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In any event, my Superman and Batman toys are on the floor, Shazam. I think it's done it for me, and I'm not even Matt. No. <laughs> it's impossible to me. No, Matt. I am not. That was, you don't want to be. I got the look again, guys. <laughs> Anything else? Did we do it justice? Justice League. Nah, huh. I, I think so. I think uh, <laughs> I, I, I really, really hope. I really hope. I, I, I've told Ryan this. Um, I, do, do, do we just need to wrap this up? No, <laughs> no, no. You know what? If somebody's, I don't even care. This, this is the Shazam show. This goes as long as we want it to. It's well over an hour. I, I, I'm not cutting anything out. Who knows? Why? It's, uh, it's, don't cut. Why don't, would you? Don't edit. Hmm. It's a waste of your time. I don't edit myself. I don't edit the show. That's right. <laughs> don't just don't. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I love, and and this is one, of, when I was younger, I and I think I think a lot of people go through this. Uh, but when I was younger, I was as gatekeepery about everything I could be. You know, was, I knew the character. I was this and that. It didn't take too long for me to, you know, I feel like I was in my mid twenties where I just went, "Why am I doing that? <laughs> Who cares? It's way cooler when mo- more people know because I can talk about it." And Shazam has never been that character. Like, there's never. Been, I've tried. I've been like, "Oh, you guys should read." Sh-. Nobody cares. It's. Stupid. <laughs> I love. I am so excited and so happy that kids, when I was a kid, my age at that, are gonna see Shazam. They're gonna fall in love with this character because he's gonna be for 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 girls, for boys, for everybody. There is something there. There's Mary Marvel for the girls. There's Darla. There's you've got representation for Asian Americans. You've got you've got Latin. Latinos in there you've got like it's it's something for everybody in a story wrapped up that every kid every adult there is no human in this on this planet and yes I will absolutely say that I don't think there's any human on this planet that can't identify with that idea the idea of I want to be a superhero I want to be something more than myself the I want to be the best version of me and I wanted to say a word and do it it's like the most wonderful thing. And knowing that so many people are now not just little kids. Like I am excited for little kids. I, I really am. I'm so, cause it just, it, like I said, it, it just, it's a moment. And there were kids in the theater and one of the kids was so funny. He was sitting right next to us and he was like, that's Mr. Mind. He knew his stuff, that's, man. He yeah, knew yeah. it all. And it was like, Oh, that's so cool. I love it. I, and I'm so happy that, 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 you know, we've got a, a an actual Shazam comic again and you've got, now there are reasons to have him in the stories. People are going to want to see him in the comics. They're going to want to see him in Justice League. And I love it. Oh, man. I'm, I can't wait to see what they do with I'm him. I'm so happy yeah. that that people are finally seeing this character that has been sidelined for a thousand different reasons, the least of which being, what do we do with a kid? They figured it out. And, <laughs> I, and you know, this movie is going to make him a significantly more popular character. And I love it. I'm really happy about it. And I couldn't possibly add to that. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for being here with us for Matt's moment, everybody. Thanks for being here for my moment, <laughs> Ryan, in person. <laughs> You've witnessed it. The culmination of everything. I'm I'm excited to see what happens to Shazam from here on out. I'm a little scared to see what happens to Matt from here on out. I feel like <laughs> I am I am I am super excited. I I hope I hope I do. I hope that you're you're gonna you're gonna go, you know what? 
I'm taking I'm taking the kid. We're gonna. Go oh, watch I'm it. definitely. I mean, the fact you mentioned gatekeeping, the fact that you're still friends with me just proves it because I'm the worst <laughs> bandwagoner here. Number one, I've had you for who knows how long, and I'm just now like. I mean, I've always liked Shazam. I definitely like, especially his kind of just left the left fieldness about him you know yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't know what it is no no, no. He, he, know, maybe you don't know what it is i didn't even know the story you know i just <laughs> saw him and was like hey this seems pretty cool or maybe i just like comic i don't know but the fact that now i'm like i bought the the trade paperback for my daughter that i'm gonna give her i bought her a, i bought a doll for my son you know I'm, I'm on this podcast with you like the fact that i'm still here at all just speaks volumes so it's <laughs> i'm just very happy and of anybody that's still here because i'm sure this show went just as long as possible because i don't care whatever it's a good movie go see it yeah go see it uh we are gonna keep doing this are you gonna do and stars we're probably gonna do it again am i gonna do stars does this movie need stars i don't know do them i give it 33 lightning bolts 33 lightning bolts out of eight lightning bolts mm-hmm. boy yeah. man that seems i don't even know the metric for lightning it's bolts really so good it's, go just go see the movie <laughs> we're gonna keep doing this for us. We're gonna do. We're gonna watch tonight. the movie. Us. Yeah, sorry. Not for. The t- <laughs> I mean, yes, us, but mm. also the movie. Jordan Peele's Us is going to play somewhere tonight, where we will be in a seat looking oh, at it. It's called the Alamo Draft House. Have oh. you been? Oh, that's right. We're going back to the Alamo Draft House. That's tonight. right. And then we're gonna Favorite go to place biker gyms and get hot dogs. When this show comes out, who knows? But that show will be after this show. So stay tuned. Either yeah. way, I guess. Come and hang out with us. (laughs) That ought to do it.